Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monobock. I'm going to start taking apart this Fostex X15 Series 2. This is the first one of these I've had. I did open it up about a week ago just so I wasn't going into this completely blind, um, but I've probably forgotten everything. So watch me fumble. Here we go. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws that hold it in place. I've already taken out four of them, so I'll just remove these two. So that one there's a bit shorter, doesn't have a shank on it. I think all the other ones are of this long shank type. That comes away. So I already discovered that this ground lead between this bit of shielding and uh, this PCB was broken. The person who's lent me this they say that there's a buzz getting into the recording, so that could well be our issue, that that's detached. Um, but also when I opened this before, I discovered there's foam rot. Foam rot. I'm trying not to shine this around because I know it does funny things to the white balance of the camera. But um, I've really only encountered it in person a couple of times when I've bought like old mixer cases and stuff. But I've seen pictures in forums where this effect of foam just turning into goo over time has done quite a lot of cosmetic damage to synthesizers that have been stored for a long time. Um, so there's a lot of sticky residue on here. I'm not entirely sure whether that can cause electrical problems. I sort of assume that it's like rubber. It's not actually conductive, but I'll definitely need to clean that. And probably what I'll do is I'll scrape that away and clearly there's some sort of issue here um, where we don't want this to short out um, any of the components underneath so I'll maybe put down some uh, masking tape, paper masking tape and that should insulate well enough. Um, this little bit for these input and output sockets comes away at that point. Um, it looks like there was a pin there at some point going through there so uh, don't be quite so blasé about the way you pull it out when you come to do it yourself. The way that this design works is there's kind of a double plastic chassis. Uh, quite a nice design in a way. Um, I suppose the closest thing I've got to compare this with is um, in terms of when they were brought out, because I think they're this is a sort of early 80s one, maybe the Tascam Porter one. And that's um, pretty empty case, a lot of space. So one occasion I bought a second hand one and it arrived and the back of it was smashed because, you know, I guess any pressure on a thin bit of plastic with empty space underneath, it's gonna break. But this is all um, packed to the brim with stuff. What you just heard drop there, by the way, is that there's these two, um, I mean, they look like they're for a carry strap, which is, would be great if it was battery powered, um, but there isn't a battery compartment, so I don't know. That's about really, but those slot out like that. Um, but all of this will lift out of this outer plastic case. But in order to do that, we need to remove the knobs. I've already removed most of them, they pull off really easily. Um, so you've got your two fader types, and your triple base controls come off, and your gain and pan ones. And at that point, give it a bit of a sugar and that is going to mostly lift off. It's still attached to a couple of places, which I'll show you. The DC jack is attached here, and then we can just pull that out of this well, it's KK socket here. And additionally, the power and record LEDs are attached to a little board on the bottom of the case here. Unscrew this one, uh, get that in focus wide ferrule screw, and that comes away. You can see the door here. Um, it looks very much like the same kind of mechanism that's on a Porter 1, where you've got this kind of ank-shaped spring here. It's basically two pins on this part of the door. One fits at this metal plate, one fits through the screw, then there's another pin on this plate that the screw goes to, that contracting and compressing gives you so with the outer case removed, you can see we've actually got pretty good access to this board. You can access it from both sides without detaching it from this plastic chassis. I'm 
when I was first taking this apart, I did uh, remove all these screws that are part of this big chunky mechanism for, for um, this selection of recording tracks and everything. Um, but you don't have to. If you were to re-lubricate or replace belts on this transport mechanism, which is something I will be doing, then you do need to remove this PCB here. There's one, two, three, four clips. Is there more than that? Let's find out. Just push them with your thumb. And then this cable here, you can just detach. Um, this cable here is really long, it comes through this space down and along to socket here. Okay. Feed that through and that's that detached. And you can see there's a large black and white KK Molex header connectors here. And that will be going to your tape heads around here. Those wires are delicate. You probably could use a flathead screwdriver or something or a pair of needle nose pliers to get that out. I'm just seeing if they come out with my girlish thumbnails. Huzzah! It works. Oh, well maybe this one's going to get stuck. Oh no, that did come out. And then we're left with two more Molex connectors there and then we've got this will be a record playback board so this is transmitting all that information. I guess this will be like a intermediate step between the magnetic heads and the record playback board so like the magnetic head information was coming in in these two sockets and it's exiting via these cables. Only thing I would say about removing these is there's colour coding but then there's two red ones here. Um, I'm definitely going to want to get your nose pliers for those. So. When I unplugged these first, I didn't notice that there was two little red ones that I might get confused. So when you come to open this, do make sure that um, you make some sort of physical note about what goes where. If I wasn't already worried about having mixed these two up, then I would be like, you know, maybe colouring the side of that with a black Sharpie and putting a mark on the PCB. Um, as it stands, I'll just need to kind of reassemble it once I've cleaned it and everything. And if it's still working properly, then I'll reopen it and swap those cables around and see if that mitigates the problem. Um, but I think all the other cables are, you know, the colour match. So here we've got a yellow connector going to a yellow um, header and or they've got different numbers of pins. So there's no real way to get anything else too mixed up, I don't think. That one's a bit awkward. I'm actually going to need to get in there with a flathead screwdriver. There we go. Are there anything else that I've missed? Yes. Yes, there's one more cable. I'm going to a socket. It's coming through that space. Right, at that point, that will come off. 